be saving for about thirty dollars. I mean, it's uh, it's an excellent uh, charger, but the only problem is it doesn't come with a power supply. So you know, this is what. Uh, you're supposed to use in a car battery, I guess, but I mean, if you don't have a car battery and you're charging inside or you're, you know, not at the track or whatever, and all you have access to is 120 volts, then uh, you have a couple choices. You can buy the power supply off Hobby City's website um, for about 20 bucks or so, I think. Or if you have a whole computer lying around that you're not using, you can use this power supply here. This is a power supply from a computer. And um, as you can see, it's uh, just you know, it has normal cables that plug into a computer. Um, let's uh, look on the side here. It says it's uh, a 300 watt ATX power supply. You're looking for the ATX uh, types. Um, ATX is very common in uh, computer power supplies, anywhere from the last, no, oh, I don't know, eight years or so. Um, you're going to probably have an ATX power supply. Uh, yeah, before that, you'll have an AT power supply. But uh, I don't even think the AT power supplies, we even have enough uh, power to actually use, use it for the purpose we want. Uh, they might only have about 200 or 150 watts. It might be right on the, um, the, the edge for the amount of amperage we need. As you can see here, this power supply, this is, this is what we're worried about, the 12 volt rail. Because this uh, tourniquet um, will take a 12 volt input. So uh, the 12 volt rail right here is supplying 10 amps. So that's more than enough. This thing will only source 5 amps. Um, there are a couple models that will source up to about 8 or 10 amps. And uh, this might just be right on the, uh, the edge for that. Um, this is a pretty weak power supply for today's age. Uh, it's a 300 watt or so. I mean, most power supplies you can get 400 watts or so. Uh, but this power supply, in essence, is really perfect because we don't have a lot of cables here. And that's a good thing because, I mean, uh, these cables are a pain... Um, in the behind to uh, to be carrying around because really we only need a few cable uh, two wires out of this to power this so all these extra wires are basically just uh, uh, Just um, a pain to carry around unless you wanted to cut them and crimp them and, and properly do them um, So you shorten them up, but uh, uh, you know what if you're not good with electronics You don't know what you're doing probably not a good idea um, Just uh, tape them up and uh, cover the ends or whatever so you can carry around uh, so the what we're interested here in is uh, these two wires right here, because this power supply will not, in all ATX power supplies, will not boot up or start without it being plugged into a motherboard. Okay, like that. When it's plugged into a motherboard, you hit the switch on the computer and it sends a signal down this closest to the circuit down this green wire right here, and the black wire beside it and it closes the circuit and powers and turns on the uh, the power supply. As you can see, I'll even show you the switch here. You'll see the, the fan goes, does not go. The power supply is not active. Doesn't matter what we do, don't worry, it is plugged in. Um, but I mean, if we plug this into a motherboard, and again, if this was in the motherboard, and you hit the switch, the power switch on the motherboard, it sends a signal down the green cable here because it closes the switch and the power supply goes on. So pretty simple what we need to do, we need to, all we need to do is pull that green wire out right here and the black wire beside it and then basically tie them together, solder them, whatever you want to do, just get them together and, uh, and cover them up with tape or whatever and then that will power on this power supply. Um, now when you're, when you're doing this it really looks like there's only one green cable, and I think there is only one green cable. Um, but uh, you never know the colors on some of the uh, um, the power supplies out there. Um, so essentially, it's pretty much the same. Uh, this is a 20-pin um, connector uh, with the clip uh, facing you, not this side. The clip here facing you. It's the um, the fourth wire from the right which is the green cable. And then the third wire from the right, which is the black cable, the negative cable. What we want to do is the third and fourth wire from the right with the clip facing you, pull them out and get them together. So I'm going to show you, um, this power supply obviously is not modified for this purpose. Um, so I'm going to take out this uh, power. So here's a power supply that I've uh, already modified. Um, I plugged it in. Um, before I plugged it in, I made sure that the switch is off. Um, I've got some uh, hot leads that I've already cut out. Uh, I wanted to make sure that they're separated before I turn this on. 
um, as you can see, this power supply is modified um, the, uh, with the clip facing you. The third and fourth, as you can see, they're gone. Uh, wires from the right, which are the third wire, which is the black, and the fourth wire, which is the green. Rip them out, just pulled them out with my hands. Um, takes a couple of pounds of pressure. Um, and uh, once they're out, um, cut the ends of the leads off a little bit, tied them together and soldered them, and put some heat shrink on it. Um, if you're going to use heat shrink, a little tip, remember to get the heat shrink onto this wire before you solder this together. Because if you don't, how are you going to get that heat shrink on? It's a common mistake a lot of people make. And then uh, once you get that heat shrink on, it's uh, pretty easy. You don't need a heat shrink gun or anything. I went through electrical school, uh, engineering, and uh, you know what? We hardly even used heat shrink in the lab. Good old lighter. All right. Just go like that. Get it nice and heated up, and it will shrink right on that wire. You don't need any fancy guns or anything like that. It's the ghetto way to do things, and it works. So that's it. They're tied together. Remember, that's the switch that closes. As long as that switch is closed, this thing will power up when we hit the button. And uh, let's see, let's watch the fan while I hit the switch. As you can see, the fan is going, all right? So those two leads right here are live. All these leads are actually live, okay? So you gotta be careful there's no shorts, you know, nothing's in there. That would be a disaster. I should tape these up, electrical tape. Um, so the leads that I'm worried about here are these two leads. Any wire on this power supply that's a yellow wire is a 12 volt rail. So you can see most uh, things that go to hard drives has a 12 volt rail, two negatives in the middle, and uh, uh, a red rail which is the 5 volt rail. Okay, we don't need 5 volts, we don't care about 5 volts, we're carried about the 12 volts. So I've just taken any one of these, uh, these, these leads here and um, with the power supply off, obviously, I'm going to turn this off because this is not good to work with live equipment. With the power supply off, all I did was uh, yanked the yellow out of, of this uh, Molex connector. I've yanked one of the, the, the uh, negatives out, the black ones out, out of the, the connectors. And um, just basically uh, stripped the ends of the wires off a little bit. And uh, there you go, you got your 12 volts and your negative for your 12 volts. It doesn't matter which negative you yank out, just as long as it's a black wire. I would recommend, you know, yanking out, well this one's uh, a loop over, let's get one that looks a little, a little better here. Oh, they're all looping, okay. It doesn't matter which, um, which one you yank out, I would just yank out the one beside it, it makes a lot of sense, as you can see on the one I've done here. Um, what I what I've done is a little different. Instead of yanking these ones out of this, I've actually create I've actually had um, another clip that I, I I created for this purpose, plugged it in here, and um, and just yanked out all the other wires I didn't need. But I mean, you don't need this extra clip right here. You can just yank this one out, yank this one out, and um, you've got your 12 volt and your negative leads. So all you do once you uh, you have those leads and your power supply can, uh, can, can power up. You put your red on the 12 volt rail because the, uh, the 12 volt rail is the, po the, the yellow is the positive, okay? And your, uh, your black is always the negative and you make sure they never touch. You know, I should, I should have a better system here and, and uh, tape these up or make a permanent solder to these or, or whatnot, but uh, it's not how I have it set up, but you should. You should take some time and actually clean that up a little bit so they never touch. So, I'm going to get my cable here. Plug that in. Turn on the switch. And we have power. And it's coming right off that 12 volt rail and that negative rail. And um, remember, this is this is the secret. If you don't have uh, these tied together, this is not going to turn on. So that's how you uh, you create a makeshift power supply out of an old computer power supply. It'll save you a couple dollars in this hard economy. And um, hope you enjoyed the uh, the tutorial. If you have any questions, you can uh, you know post them on the comments section, and I'll uh, try to answer them as much as possible for you.